This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Earlier this year, I built the demo robots, which Pac-Man here is one of. These were a set of four robots that fought in some very big arcade style arenas, and they were there to get people interested at our big event of the year, which was held during a science festival. Now, that worked really, really well, especially kids absolutely loved running up, grabbing the joysticks and having a go at the demo robots. And I really wanna do some more with these robots, but those arenas are massive and trying to take them places is complicated. So I want an easier, more portable solution for taking these places and controlling them. And that is what we're gonna work on today. When I first conceived of this demo bot idea, the original plan was to use these cheap knockoff PS3 controllers and basically have the ESP32 that is in these robots talk directly to these. However, there was one small hitch with that, the smaller version of the ESP32 that I'm running in these to shrink the size down and make these kind of viable does not talk to these controllers. So I had to throw this whole idea out. However, when I was looking for and purchasing these, I found something else. These, which is a little grip for a Nintendo Switch Joy-Con. And I thought this was going to be absolutely perfect for making a custom controller in. Now, the reason I decided to go a bought grip rather than trying to print this is that handle grips and ergonomics are very, very difficult for printers to print. There's a whole issue with having layer lines everywhere, which means that unless you spend a long, long time filing them, you never get anywhere near the surface finish of an ABS injection molded part, which is what these are quite likely. Of course, if I'm gonna turn this thing into a controller, I'm going to need custom electronics in here. And that's where PCBWay comes in. PCBWay have sent me a whole bunch of brand new circuit boards that actually have been designed and routed out so that they fit into these really nicely. They lock in there really well. And actually I'm not able to get, oh, I can get it back out, but it's quite difficult. And I really need to like dig in under here because these things are designed with foam pads, top and bottom to hold the Joy-Con in place. And then because I was able to custom design this board and have it meet my specifications, I've got these little notches in here that hang on in the controller right where the Joy-Con like slide catch would be. So I don't have to worry too much about this. I can literally just like jam this thing in and as long as it goes down, it is lined up and everything works. You'll also see that this has got some little trigger buttons on it. So I've designed my PCBs in such a way that there are some buttons right where those come out, which means I can actually use these trigger buttons in my controller as well. So because we are talking to a ESP32 in the actual demo robots, I've got an ESP32 on this board as well. This is an ESP32 S2 Mini that will go in here. And then we've just got some potentiometers on one side, an LED and those extra buttons. So the next step here would normally be to solder this board all together, but here is one I have prepared earlier. So you can see I've literally just soldered on everything that needs to be soldered on and got it all working. So you can see there's extra buttons up the top here and my joysticks. I've also found some joysticks that have a throttle style on one side so that I can actually build these much like you would see in a regular aircraft transmitter that most people use for driving combat robots. With everything wired together, we now need to look at mounting this thing in here. I left some bolt holes in the design to lock everything down, but I didn't think about the fact that the caps fall off or how far the caps actually move. So originally my intention was to push this thing down in here and then at all four bolt hole points, I was going to have a M12 standoff, sorry, a 12 millimeter M3 standoff. But in this case over here, the ones at the top foul with the joysticks, so we can't use those. So it took me quite a number of attempts to work out that uh, yes, this actually was never gonna work, and so I've had to change tack and only use the standoffs at the back to hold the back up, but then the back gets held by the front as well. So you'll see that in a minute. And we'll uh, drill this with a drill. All right, that should be enough pilot drilling. We should have marks. 
where we want our things to go. I'm gonna then take this apart because I'm very likely to blow through the back of it with a drill, and we certainly don't want that to happen. It's fairly easy to get apart. It is just four screws in the back. Like so, and then pull the whole thing apart. Easy. All right, with that cleaned up, we should be ready to at least do a trial attachment here. We don't wanna do the final attachment yet because we need to drill some more holes in this to put the battery in, which you'll see in just a second. But we do wanna get this somewhat together so we can make sure that everything lines up. And so far, that is looking Good, I'm not sure if you can see those holes, but everything does seem to currently line up. So we're gonna throw in some bolts. All right, there we go. We are now back to, well, we're now together for the first time, and it's probably time to put the back back on this thing, just for a second so that we can get the battery mount put in, because obviously there's not a lot of space in this design, so we can't really do a whole lot with the battery except for have it external to the Joy-Con case effectively. Uh, so that is gonna hang off the back and the easiest way to attach that will be to put this thing back together and then basically do fairly similar to what we've already done. Shouldn't actually need all of those screws in. It just needs to hold itself together like so. Then we can have a look at this. This is the top plate for this thing, which should sit down over here. And then we can just put in our two screws that go into our uprights. So that then holds everything together. And you can see the joysticks still perform as they're supposed to. And everything still works. Now, this is not a full, like, tight grab on this. It's just enough to stop people from putting their fingers into the bits I don't want them putting their fingers into. This top section up here is gonna hold a switch and it also holds a little spacer, which holds down to the back, which is where the battery's gonna go. So let's put that in now, which literally one long bolt and then another of these nylon spacers. It's kind of easier and helps when you just like run all of the same hardware, which is why I'm running everything on M3 and these 12 mil nylon spaces. And then we're gonna grab our battery. And we're gonna put that on the back end. Now there are bolts way down in the bottom underneath where the battery's gonna sit and those are gonna hold everything together. This is gonna be the interesting part here is because this doesn't have any real way to square itself up on the base. So I just have to do that and then mark the drill positions. And then however I mark this is how square it's going to sit for the rest of time, basically. We can work out where we want this, about there, because the whole point of this is to hold it, have it so that people's fingers don't touch the battery enclosure. There'll be lids that go over here and then they can use this thing and not ever worry about touching that battery controller. But now I need to mark where these bolt holes go, and that's gonna be easiest with the drill. And there we go, that's the holes drilled. I've also poked a hole for the battery connector so that when we set everything down, battery connector terminal drops through that hole and we can run power up in through here and then up in through this controller. I'm going to need to put another hole in here somewhere to ground, put the ground wire up in here. And we're gonna need to solder all that together uh, while the whole thing is apart and then kind of clamshell it roughly back together. And then we have it all wired together through the system. So it's time to try and put this thing together. All right, so we're gonna start by locking down the battery pack on the back. So that's the other thing is it's much easier to put the screws in when the battery pack is not connected to anything. So we're gonna throw our three screws in here like so. The battery pack on, we can then seat down our electronics, which we need to do by getting the wiring in the right spot. This ground wire here is absolutely massive, but we need it to be so that I can actually, you know, get all of these electronics where they need to be. Now, this needs to go in a very specific way to keep that wire in the right spot. There we go. 
a Z, look at that, and then we bolt this guy down as well. And then finally we put our switch in, which is a little bit of a tight fit. I have not quite got the spacing right in this piece of plastic for this switch, but that will be okay for now. This is just gonna be a test and I will uh, print a new version of this top plate later on. I have made my wires just that little bit too long. It's making them difficult to feed. That's okay, we will get them in. But once our wires are fed, we can then just bolt the top plate on and it should basically be done now. There is one more bolt to go from the back and that's this final one in underneath the battery that holds the battery connector into the top plate and just cinches everything closed. We have a hopefully working controller. Let's put this cap back on. It's just a print for now, but I will have more. I have um, purchased ones of these coming in because as mentioned, it is hard to print round things. So we do actually need a printed version of that. With that done, we can put the battery in. Okay, so we're just gonna do a bench top test because this is a very weak robot and it's not really actually gonna do any damage. So we're just going to turn the controller on. Let's start with the weapon. Okay, so my send signal could probably be sending a little faster. It's a little jittery right now, but it does work. Okay, that works very well, actually. Now let's try driving. Yeah, look at that. That is one working controller. And it fail safes correctly, cool. So there we have it, that is our controller done. It is a fully custom electronics controller in a Switch Joy-Con style, or a Switch Joy-Con size, I should say. I am actually pretty happy with how this has turned out. This is of course a version one build. There's a bunch of stuff that isn't actually implemented yet, which is like, the shoulder buttons aren't actually doing anything when you press them currently, despite the fact that there are buttons on that circuit board to do that. There's also LEDs on the board, which I haven't cut holes in the top plate for yet. Those are gonna be for like power indication and stuff. At the moment, when you turn this on, there is no way of knowing whether the thing is actually on or not. So I've got, still got a little bit of work to do on these and I also want to get them into the arena and test them a little bit. I also definitely need to get new caps because this one, the printed one I have, keeps falling off all the time. It's not a good solution. Uh, and hopefully a port one will actually grab the shaft of the potentiometer a little bit better. Uh, yeah, but this is that's a good first little start here. I'm gonna take these into the arena. I'm gonna test them myself on a couple of B-Div plastic robots, I think. Just make sure that everything works on them, they fail safe correctly, uh, and then I might even make a version two and do a video on that as well. Anyway, that has been it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.